Awesome, David. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, so yesterday I gave the presentation about creating offense and didn't want to jump into too much detail. I actually really like this setting, a little bit more intimate, obviously a little bit closer. You can see the detail that I'm talking about. One of the things I didn't like about talking on stage last year in front of 6,500, some people were so far back in the back on stage trying to see exactly where my feet were or exactly the way I'm opened up with our leads and secondaries and so on and whatnot. It's kind of tough to see. So this is a little bit more intimate setting. Uh, I'll see you afterwards. Don't hesitate to stop me, and we'll have some conversations about it as well. I'm going to take you around the world. We'll start at first. We'll go to second. We'll spend some time at third base as well. Yes, there's uh, base run things that we do at third base that will help create offense that are the difference in out and safe there at the plate. So let's kick this thing off. We're going to go to first base. We talked about leads and secondaries yesterday. We're at 12 feet on primary, right-handers or left-handers. does not matter. I make sure all my guys... I'm pretty much a stickler on how we do some of our basic getting our leads, right? When it comes to actually steals, I kind of give them some of that freedom and some ownership of it. But I'm a stickler of knowing where they're at, not only at first base, but at second base as well. Simple, easy, start with both heels on uh, the bag. I make sure that I give the outs, and they give outs back. So when I go through signals and signs, I know that they're looking at me, and they're not looking at the pretty little blonde sitting behind me in the stands, okay? We're all on the same page. So we execute, yep, good, give signs, signals. We'll go left, open up, right, and it's a shuffle. Shuffle, for me, it's a kind of a settle, kind of a half. For my long leg guys, my guys are 6'2", it'll be two shuffles. But my center line now is in contact with 12. A couple notes to make <clears throat> is the heels. My heels are even with the back of the bag, and my right, feel, my right foot is slightly open. So the inseam or inside of part of my foot will keep my foot, uh, right foot slightly open here so my hips can clear, right? What you'll see is some of your guys or some of your kids will end up being here, ready to rock and roll and take off, closing the hips off. I want to make sure. I don't want to be so open where I'm facing this way where I can't get in a good drive position that we talked about yesterday. The left hand, left hip drive, we'll talk here in a second, I'm trying to get in a drive position. I don't want to be so open here, but just slightly open so my hips are already clear and I can clear my hips when I'm ready to go to second base. For me, I like the heels being even in the back of the bag. Reason being is for our dive backs, right? We've got to retreat. you got the right-handers and you got left-handers. Our guys that dive back, we say dive down, okay, not up. You get some belly floppers. A third baseman is probably the worst at diving than anybody I've ever seen in my entire life. Not super athletic. You could hit a baseball, but not super athletic. You want to do the belly flop back. If you're going to dive back, with our heels being E with the back of the bag, we don't have to change direction. We're going at the back of the bag, obviously, with our right hand there in a straight line to where it's the furthest point that obviously the first baseman has to make the tag. Simple, easy, efficient there going back and retreating. The other one, you know, sometimes we get into our vaults and our timing steals and our guys are kind of close and they have the early pick, right? So your kid's going to go back in standing up. They read the left-hander's move early. He's just got the old BS move, yep, he's going to go to first base. The retreat when you're standing up is probably more valuable than anything and probably most undercoached. We're playing BYU uh, at LSU in a tournament in 2013. The guy from BYU is a good one, man. He's 93, 96, sinking the heck out of it. Got his slider going that day. Got his changeup going that day. We're in a 2-2 ball game in the eight. <clears throat> Running at first, one out, right? So he picks back, and we're trying to get off. And he picks early. Our guy goes back in the bag. We treat our retreat, or we, the way we do it, is we're going to jump stop. Drive our right leg into it. So if it's a left-hand or right-hander, whatever it may be, if he's coming back, stand up. He's going to drive his right foot in the middle part of the bag with a good, firm base. My eyes up here, ready for the overthrow. We've actually been accused of being Bush. Oh, man, you're going back to my first baseman. That's BS. You know, y'all trying to create something. No, 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 no. All we're doing is creating a different margin of error for your errant throw, right? So when we're playing BYU, we go back here. By being in this position, right, where I'm in the middle of the part of the bag, first baseman's got to go through me, right, or around me to go get the baseball. Throw goes down the line. We go to third base. Next pitch, the guy hits the ground ball to short, which would have been a 6-4, three-double play. They're out the end and going to ninth. Instead, it was a ground out. We get the RBI. It's three to two ball game. We win three two. That one little deal, right? One little small little deal. Just going back in the bag the right way. Your kids can get lazy with it. Our guys get lazy with it. We drill them. I'm saying on them about it. Again, sometimes it's not the information you're giving it, it's the implementation of it. Right? How much are you staying on him? Are you staying on him every time he goes back? When he goes back, kind of gives this free loaf, like, yeah, coach, I'm back easy. I'm safe. Yeah, you also gave him this margin of error to make a bad throw, too. So <laughs> I tell our guys, and when I got accused of it, and I was accused by a good coach, and I was accused of it by a good program, great program, I want to ask the umpire, I said, where's our foot on the bag? If our foot's on the inside part of that bag when we go back, 
let me know because I'll take care of it in my dugout. I don't, don't want to be accused of being bush and trying to do anything that's illegal. But this is, we have a right to the bag. And my foot being in the middle part of the bag is a right of me having to the bag. So you make sure his foot's in the middle of the bag. We don't have any issues. Whatever they want to say, whatever they want the first baseman wants to do, that's fine. But you and I both know that's a completely legal play for his foot to go back in the middle of the bag. Where's his foot? Coach's foot's in the middle of the bag. Okay, we're good. I'll go back to the dugout. If you have any other issues, you just let me know. So the retreat's big for us going back in there, especially standing up. It's little, simple, right? It's not groundbreaking information. But again, the implementation of them going back could make you win or lose a game for us in 2013 with BYU. It helped us win that game. <clears throat> going to our secondaries. Last night we talked about it a little bit. You know, the difference in out and safe for this, this. That's second base, third base, the next bag. Tell our guys to gain ground and not air, right? So I'd say, hey, go me a secondary. Yeah, coach, two shuffles. So they do this number. Cool, nice, easy, relaxed. They land, it's usually about 10 feet, maybe 8 feet, right, for my big goons. Tell them to accelerate, get lower half, right? Expect pick, expect pick. Tell themselves, remind, expect pick, nothing's on, and then we're going to gain ground. Boom, here, and now I'm out to my 12 feet. We're out a long ways. We start at 12 here. We land another 12 there. It's 24 feet. We're away from first base. Coach, you don't ever get picked off, back picked at first base? No, because they tell our guys to sprint back every single time something doesn't happen. If they're sprinting back, they're not enticing the catcher to throw back. If they're going to jog back, if they're going to kind of walk back, then yes, they're going to get picked every single time. Try to create as much distance as we can to shorten uh, <coughs> towards second base and give ourselves a little bit more uh, time to read the ball and dirt. We love the ball and dirt read. We love the kicks. So we try to take advantage of that. That can only be done with good, aggressive secondaries. Again, not groundbreaking information, but the implementation. We're staying on our guys. We do a bunt carousel. We got a guy at the plate. We got a guy at second. They're laying their sack ones and sack threes and their drags down. I get guys on the corners at first and third that are getting their reads, right? Spec pick, spec pick, all right? They get their secondary, spec miss, spec miss. The first time I see my guy doing this in a drill, do, yeah, coach, does it really matter? I mean, it's just, yes, it does matter. Because if you're going to do it now, you're going to do it in the game. Let's make sure we're training the right way for the game. We're just becoming habits. All right? So the secondary is big, big, big force. <coughs> going into steals, right, what everybody wants to talk about. We gave a list of them last night, a ton of them last night. And we talked about steal techniques, <coughs> different styles we run. This is one I'm not too much of a stickler on. Whatever they, works for them, go for it. All right? Whatever they're comfortable and confident in. The biggest thing we talked about again last night was confidence. Confidence as a base runner is the same thing as confidence as a hitter. You'll be a great base runner if you're confident. You'll be a great hitter if you're confident. So we try to give them different styles and different ways to do it in order to be confident in what they're doing. You got the old basic, grab the money and run, right? Regular style, they're at 12. And this is what that left hand and left hip drive we're talking about a little bit. We're slightly open with our right foot, <clears throat> ready to rock and roll. Relax, tension free, tension free. We will stick a hat or a hand. We'll do hand slaps for drives. And I'll kind of start baby steps. Hey, man, all I want you to do is just grab it. So nice and easy, grab. There it is. Nice and easy, grab. There it is. Nice and easy, grab. Okay, now we'll go ahead and full circle this thing. Boom, grab. There's the drive that I wanted. I told you last night, right, we're talking about this running position. If I can get my hand here, I'm ready to drive this hand down. This way this energy is going to work my flat back. When I pull this hand down, it's going to create the drive that I want to go to the next one, right? Create another drive. There it is. There's a pull on the ground. And now we're getting this running form, this lean that we want going towards second base in a very direct direction. It creates that in that drill. <coughs> so as you're trying to get this hand up, some guy's hands will kind of stay down here, all right? Or you got the little T-Rex guy. Avens, the guy I showed you still in the bag. His freshman, sophomore year, he wanted to run like T-Rex. Try to steal second. His little small hands. Drive. Drive that hand. Get that arm up. Drive it down. Because it's going to help you pull the next one up, Okay. So in this, <laughs> that grab the money and run drill, it's nice and easy. It's one we'll work on early because I think it works in a lot of our steals. <clears throat> grab that money and run, boom, there it is. Nice, relax, nice, relax, boom, there it is. All right, now let's go full swing. We'll grab it and we'll go ahead and sprint to second base. If you want to add to it, right, then you can put a guy on the mound. For us, I want first to concentrate on just trying to get that drive. I don't want to complicate too many things. I don't worry about drive and getting a great jump. Let's work on drive first, and then let's add getting the right jump, okay, and timing-wise and reaction time. <coughs> Going to our sink. So a lot of our guys have issues with getting tense, right? Our guys are muscular. We try to recruit a guy who can bang and a guy who can run. We try to do both. I don't like too many big ogres that can just bang. 
All right, you can be plug on the bases. I don't want to play them on the days when the wind's blowing out and not play them on the days when the wind's blowing in. I don't want just a bunch of runts that can't bang and hit the ball over the guys, uh, outfielder's head. I want guys to hit doubles, right? Don't have to necessarily hit homers, but I want guys who can bang in a gap as well. In that athlete, in that setup, we have a lot of guys that kind of get some stiffness in that lower back. They're kind of built similar to me a little bit. I'm not a little bit bigger than I am, a little more muscular than I am. But they get that lower back, right, kind of stiffness. <clears throat> For us, we want to try to get that stiffness out. So how do we break that stiffness? Because when they get here in this motion, they get real tense. All right, when's it going to go? When's it going to go? When's it going to go? And all this starts to tense up. To remind them tension free. To help break the inertia a little bit, maybe loosen them up, we tell them just sink in the legs. We'll start a little bit higher, yep, and then they'll just sink, and they'll sink. And this keeps them nice and loose. And now they're starting to drive, not in their heels, but in the balls of their feet. Sink, 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 there it is, and they can get that jump that they want. If they get too far down, right, I tell them don't get to the point where you're sitting on the john. If you get down here, stand right back up. It's simple. It's easy. Reset it. All right, so here we are. Nice, relaxed. Yep, I'm ready to go, ready to go. Sink, sink. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Now I don't feel like I'm in a very strong, strong position. I tell them, your body tells you where you're at, right? My glutes get pretty tight pretty early, right? For them, it might be a little bit later. When those glutes get to a point where they're breaking, right, oh, no, just stand right back up. Nice and easy, we'll reset it. We're trying to time it up, jump, 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 reset it, jump, jump, there it is. If we don't get a jump, no big deal, just don't go. So as we obviously work that in, it helps them kind of get more comfortable with what that read is. We got the lean. We had a guy who stole 39 bags, 2012, actually played with the Mariners. Uh, just hung him up last year after AAA ball. Set our uh, single season record for stolen bases was two off for our career record. But he was a leaner, man, loved to lean. And what he would lean is over that front right knee, so he'd get this route, right? Hey, coach, I'm trying to, I want to get my direction going towards second base. Cool, I'm good with it. You show me that you can have success with it, I'm in. We never taught lean before. Something he went off on his own and did. He was a guy who could run a 6'6". Six, six. Hey, man, I'm going to give you some freedom, some ownership of this. Coach, I stole 20 bags last year. I think I could steal 40 bags with this. Got close. He stole 39. All it is, though, is putting that weight on that right knee. Again, same idea. We get to a point to where we feel unpowerful, where I can't drive, where now my weight's being transferred to just my right foot, and I'm off my left. Just reset it back up. Nice and easy. Lean, lean. There it is. Lean. All right, there's the time that he wants, and he can lean into that and break that inertia. Some of those guys are a little bit stiffer, like the sink and like the lean, because it kind of keeps them loose because they're moving, right? As if they don't have movement, if they're out here just waiting for that guy to make the regular move, right, the regular steal, and they start to get tense and they start to get stiff. So the sink and lean both help combat that. <coughs> we got the vault. The vault is something I took from Coach Golf at, uh, at Louisiana Tech at the time, or at Campbell at the time. He went to Louisiana Tech, went to Alabama, and now he's at the uh, University of Purdue. But uh, golf was good, man, and some of our guys had started playing with it a little bit. Um, <coughs> but our guys started at nine, right? So our catcher that was number one in the country last year for stolen bases for catchers, and I actually looked up the exact number, of 16 stolen bases, 16 for 20 last year, started 25 of our 59 games and played in 35, and he had 16 bags. So just kind of give you an idea of how many bags he actually did take. Uh, only telling what he'd do if he was a full-time guy. But it's simple. It's easy. He's going to walk out to nine, and he knows where nine's at. As he walks to nine, he's going to pick, it's a timing deal, right? So he's going to pick a time to basically just simply vault out. He's going to jump one good time. In that vault, he is reading the pitcher, whether he's going to the mound or not, or going to the plate or not. He has a split second once he lands to make the decision to go, get a jump, or shut it down and reset. So, for instance, and again, this is all of a field deal. You got to get them out there and play around with it because they're going to look like complete dummies for a second, all right, when they first start trying to this vault because they're going to take off, stop, like, Coach, why didn't know? He didn't go. It, it's all a timing deal. And again, it's a field. It's easy. He walks out. He sees, boom, he picks the right time to vault. That split second when his foot hits, his momentum's going that direction. He's got a split second to say, yep, I'm going, or no, boom, I'll shut it down, and he'll get his normal secondary. If the timing didn't time it up right, no big deal. Don't get a jump. We don't do what? Don't go, right? That's what I tell my guys all the time. Don't get a jump. Don't go. No big deal. Uh, <coughs> we go into our count, our lion counts. We are creatures of habit, right? Humans, mankind, uh, habit. And pitchers get in a rhythm. They have a lot of things to think about, very times, right? But, hey, man, that three-hole comes up, 
And he's this guy, hey, man, we went over the scout report. We got to really pound fastballs in. We got to do a good job of uh, using our all speed away, so on and whatnot. So he's so locked in and concentrated on him. All of a sudden you see, yeah, maybe for three hitters, the runners that were getting there, yeah, he's doing a good job, varying his looks, varying his times. Maybe we're going to go one look. Hey, man, one Mississippi, two Mississippi. But all of a sudden, that three-hole gets in there, and he's just locked in on trying to get that guy out. Man, I can't let this guy hit me across the parking lot. My guy's going to make fun of me. They're going to be the poo-poo ball in my locker if that happens. So I want to make sure this guy doesn't get me. All of a sudden, they become creatures of habit. You got to know what the habit is. Also, again, we have more access to video nowadays. But what is their normal routine? We all have it, right? All pitchers have a basic timing. We go off a lion, right? L-I-O-N. L-I-O-N. In. We'll sit in team meetings and we'll constantly talk about that kind of time sequence. Don't get out there, get excited and go L-I-O-N. Coach, he's on in. Dude, I got him on O. You got to relax, right? L-I-O-N. Same thing as one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. We'll just make sure the count's right. Those guys will get into that rhythm. <clears throat> so sometimes they'll also get in the rhythm of when they pick. We had a pitcher a few years ago, got drafted by the White Sox. Loved the kid to death. It was one of our weekend guys, midweek starters. Uh, we call pick, and as soon as we call pick, I swear he was picking the first base before he even got the alert side down. There he goes, boom, he's going to first base. Hey, man, I want you to hold pick. Guess what he was doing? Alert side goes down, he's picking. Relax, man. Okay, relax. You got to Coach, man, I, I got the yips, man. If I hold that baseball here and I got to pick the first, I'm, th- I'm throwing it down the line. I'm just telling you. I'm going to throw it down the line. All right, well, that was his deal. So I didn't know exactly what time he was going to go off of, but I knew when he wasn't going to pick. Some guys get in habits of that. They like to pick just early in the count. So I know, hey, man, after I, L-I, picks out, good. Now I'm ready to rock and roll. I don't know exactly when he's going to go. He might go on O. He might go on N. We might reset this thing back to L, but I know he's not going to pick. He has this mental block where he's this habit that he doesn't know that he only picks on L or I. He only picks early or only picks late, right? But that way we can try to eliminate some of this stuff. So we'll just put ourselves in a good count. All right, say we're on I or uh, O count, all right, and Coach Donnelly will go over to him, hey, man, we're on O count here. So they're over first base, plain and simple, L, I, O, we take off. If in that first step, for some reason, right, we miscounted, he ended up, uh, you know, taking a little bit more time than what we expected him to do, whatever it may be. In that first step, no big deal, can shut it down, square back up. Hey, all right, no problem. Didn't get the jump I wanted to, didn't time it up the way I wanted to. We got creeps. You saw last night we used creeps at second. Now we're using creeps at first base as well. I thought that video worked out perfect. At first I was upset about it, but then I looked at it and it worked out perfect. Where the guy was actually creeping out, you could see what he was gaining. (coughs) When we do creep, we're still in contact with 12. But as we're in contact with 12, our reset here, right, all these have a reset. Whether it's sink, lean, there's a reset somewhere in there. (coughs) So we're going to start here in contact with 12. He'll keep his feet moving, keep his feet moving, keep his feet moving. I don't want him to get outside of 12. Once my foot gets outside that 12, he's way off. You don't have to have a very good move to pick that guy off. Okay, because actually his front foot's probably now at more 14, almost 15 feet if he get outside that 12. Tell our guys in contact with 12, pretty simple. Guys got a good move. We can shallow up. I'll say as we do this creep, we can creep, creep. If he kind of slows your feet, all right, no problem. You get to 12, just keep your feet moving. Keep your feet moving, same way we would at second base. So you can reset it back if you want, if you like gaining ground towards second, or just keep your feet moving. Plain, simple, easy. Again, if we don't get a jump, no big deal, don't go. In this, this is why I like to give them the freedom. Because not every time you guys are going to get a jump. So the only time I call steal is the only time they're going to steal. They don't get a jump, and i got to wait for the next moment. Oh, man, okay, here we go again. Well, shoot, he felt pretty good about that last one. He probably should have taken that last one, but I didn't feel confident about it. So I try to give them as much freedom as I possibly can to call their own steals. Give them the sets. There's the seven sets. Uh, have fun with it. Get after it. And do what you got to do. Make sure that they're resetting. The other thing that Avon's brought to my attention, you know, you learn from your players as you go along. They're smarter than we give them credit for sometimes. All right. With Avon's, he's like, Coach, man, you know, we did this creep thing. And I was getting way out there. But I didn't feel real comfortable. I felt like my jumps were actually worse because I was so worried about being so far away from the bag. That's like, oh, okay, hold on. I started getting a little reserved. I got to dive back to bag. Hey, is it okay if we shorten up? Yeah. If you feel like you can get a better jump, because to me, the jump is the key, right? The timing of it, the jump is going to be the key on still in second base. It's not going to be the distance, right? We oh, well, if Coach, it's closer to second base. If I get off at 14 feet, I'm a foot closer. That's different than bang, bang, play. 
what you're going to create here in your drive and your confidence and your jump at 12 is going to be much more efficient than 14 if you have no fear at 12 than what you do at 14. If you get out to 14 and you start having fear, fear ain't going to work, man. you got to get fearless. If you feel confident at 14, go ahead. But if you feel more comfortable being at 12 or shorten up a little bit to get a better jump, I'm good with it. Steal the bag there. That's kind of our seven that we go through, <coughs> and then we'll, uh, we'll talk about there at first base. One last piece I'll tell you at second, when they're still in the bag, I think it's undercoached, and we undercoach it. I'm, I'm guilty of this as well. It's a slide. I hate going in on Monday and watching video, and our guy is going to be safe sliding to second base if he slides head first or feet first. Regardless, I give them the option if he slides straight into the bag. Instead, what's he want to do, right? He wants to do a little hook slide. Well, coach, I felt like I was going to be out, so I saw the infielder there. He's in front of the bag. I was going to slide out here. Because of that, you were out. It took more time. Get those guys to slide directly in that bag. I tell them there's a very rare time they should be hook sliding on a straight steal or ball and dirt. If they're dead out, like, hey, man, he's got the old Major League Baseball. Like, come on, Bubba. Come on. Come on. Just come in. One of those, yeah, then we can hook slide, right? Or maybe it's a play at the plate where you're getting coached up by your uh, base runner, right, the on-deck guy. He's coaching, hey, man, inside, outside. When we're trying to steal a bag, slide directly into the bag. It makes no sense for those guys to go start hook sliding and sliding around unless they're completely dead out. Make sure they understand the difference of what dead out is and a bang-bang play because that could be the difference in out and safe there. Let's work our way around. Let's go to second base. Uh, talk about our leads at second. At second base, <coughs> also we don't have to worry about the early pick. So we get our guys to walk it off. We're going to be in contact with 16. Well, there's nothing on. We hit and run, whatever it may be. And it's five steps. What I'll do is, obviously, my five steps are going to be different than my guy at 6'2". I'll set up, again, my tape mark there where they know where 16's at. And they'll walk it out five steps. Left foot first, one, two, three, four, five. Square up and ready to rock and roll. Same deal. Heels even with the back of the bag. No outs, one out or two outs, we keep our guys in a straight line. Sometimes we're like, coach, man, you don't want us to back up? No, here's where I'm a stickler again. I want to know where you're at. If I start deeping up, some guys like to deepen up and kind of back the shortstop out, like, hey, man, well, coach, he can't really pick me if I back him out. Or he can. I've seen it happen. We want to back him out. I want you in a direct line with second base or with third base because I want to take the bag with nobody out. I want to take the bag with one out. I want to take the bag with two outs. Whenever they decide to give it to us there in the middle and it's given a lot more than you would realize, then we're going to take third base. Now we have our rules, right? When to be aggressive, when not to be aggressive. I'm going to be a lot more aggressive with one out than I am with no outs and two outs. We have our times. We're going to be really aggressive with two outs. They just back out because they want to give positioning, right? Hey, man, go ahead. Y'all can have the bag. Cool. I'll go to third base because we're going to hunt a kick there too and put some pressure on you. So we'll take that bag as well. But I want our heels even in the back of the bag. I don't ever want us to deepen up because I want to know exactly where they're at. When they deepen up here and they kind of walk into line, I like the idea of getting some momentum going to third base. But I think it's harmful because if the angle's not right, I don't know if I'm coming in at 12. I don't know if I'm coming in at 16. I don't know if I'm coming in at 18. I have no idea exactly where I'm coming into the line. By setting that up <laughs> with those five steps and being at 16, they know exactly where they're at, and I know where they're at more importantly. So when I'm trying to extend them, get them off, work the middle, trying to work us to get to a point to be able to steal third base, then I know exactly where they're at, and I know what we got to get to, and I know how to get there. The work, walking in stuff makes it a little bit tougher. So let's go through. Uh, yeah, normal 16. We go straight steal, right? Hey, coach put it on. He said, I want you to straight steal the bag. We're walking out to 21. So I see those guys just being really nonchalant, not really paying attention, and it's happening less and less. So I'll see more of these talks and conversations we have, these conventions, and more success we have on the bases. People are more aware of it, so they try to figure out how to guard against it a little bit. But, hey, man, they're just not paying attention, know what the big deal Hey, nobody out, right? Hey, yeah, it's early in the game. They're not going to bunt. He's not going to steal third because nobody out. Okay, well, cool. We'll go straight steal. Seven steps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and square up. And now I'm in contact with 21. We're going to rock and roll. What I'll do is if I see a shortstop all of a sudden creep in, anything verbal can check it down. Not check it off, but check it down. So now I'm at 21 feet. I don't know if you realize, but 21 feet is a long ways away from second base, Okay. If that guy starts to creep, it's up to me and my responsibility. Hey, hold right there. Well, coach, you said hold right here. Nope, it was verbal. Verbal check down. So they don't really have a whole lot, a lot of idea what's going on. Hey, hold right there. You okay? You're going to see him just jump back one. Cool. And keep his feet moving. He's ready to rock and roll. Now we're at a distance. We're probably about 18 feet where we can get back. Okay? If he wants to creep a little bit more, I can go back another. Then we get back. Right? So it makes it simple and easy for us to be able to efficient. I check this down. 
right? Shortstop sees what? Oh, he checked down. Okay, cool. I'm good. I'm going to back out. Good. Thank you. Appreciate you backing out. Hey, off one. Boom. Momentum's going back. And now here we go. Still third base again. Ready to rock and roll. If I don't feel like we're going to have that situation, I can just put green light on. We'll walk out to six. It's the only time I allow them to start with the right foot. So we'll go right, left, right, left, right. And here we're at. Boom, rock and roll. We're at 18. Okay, we're at 18 feet there. Ready to rock and roll. Do our deal. So, again, same idea. Here he is at 18. Yeah, shortstop's kind of uh, halfway in there, not really in there. Kind of pay attention, give the old glove clap, whatever it may be. Hey, the head turn. Look, this guy's head turn, when he vacates, it takes a long time. Okay, so I know that. Hey, off one. I tell them if we're in the process of getting to seven, right, or they're at seven, steal the bag. Steal the bag. Well, coach, there was nobody out. You didn't put steal. Steal the bag. If you get out that far, take third base, okay? Get away with murder, go for it, go get it, get after it. So we got our straight steal, we got our green light there. We got two others we use. We use a hop and we use a vault. The vault's very similar to the hop. The only thing we distinguish between the two, the vault is one. The hop is multiple. So, let's start with the vault first. Again, we're creatures of habit, right? The looks. One look, two look, locate, pitch, all right? One look, locate, pitch. One look, two look, locate, pitch. What did you realize in that sequence? What did you realize? Never went, yeah, never went more than two. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm going to go second look then. Okay, we'll go second look. Perfect. I'll vault off of that one. So, hey, man, this pitch, he went one look. Cool. This next pitch, guess what he did? He went two look for me. Fantastic. So when he turns that head, it's real simple. I'm vaulting out. I'm ready to go. And as soon as I see his movement, I'm in the process of going to third base there. I'll take third. That's the one you saw last night was Schwarner in the video. Unfortunately, my video guy would cut it just short. But that was the process of getting there. You saw he was way off. He was at his 21 when he took off. Okay, but that's what we went on there. We went on vault, went on head look, right? So, again, some of this is process of elimination. If I can eliminate knowing he's not going to three head looks, okay, cool. I'll just vault on two. But, Coach, what if he goes one? Then we just don't go, all right? If that's what we're going to key in on and be confident in, we'll wait till he goes two look. The one time he does do two looks, you got to get third base. You can't wait for me to tell you. You can't go, oh, yeah, there, I saw it now, Coach. Too late, man. It's a pitch late. If you're going to commit to that, then we got to make sure we commit to the vault look. The hop's a little different, and the hop's a little bit more aware. Okay, it's a green light deal. <coughs> We're going to come out to six, right? We'll get out here. We'll get here early. If the pitcher comes set looking at us, we'll stay at our six. When he looks to the plate, all we're going to do is extend. So he looks away from me. Boom, extend. He looks back at me, right? Boom. I'll decrease. I'll hop back. He looks back to the plate. Again, I'm extending. So now all I'm doing is going back and forth. Now, one. Pitcher's freaking out trying to figure out what the heck I'm doing out at second base, right? Why is he hopping around like he's a fool? And we'll decoy it, too. So not only will we not just put it in just when we're stealing, because now I'll see people are where we do it. Oh, uh, if you see him hopping, man, they're going to steal. Y'all just pick. We'll shorten up. We have decoys. We have fakes on there as well. We can decoy that one, and it's just a look, and now we're just playing with the pitcher's mind. And that's the idea of it, right? The whole base run we're trying to do is create pressure on this pitcher. I don't want him comfortable up there on the mound. All right, in the box, what we're trying to create is trying to create pressure. I don't want him comfortable up there on the mound. Same thing we can do. We can help our hitters out by creating this pressure. So while he's looking at us, hopping back and forth, trying to figure out what's going on, he locates, leaves the ball middle, cut in center. Boom, there's the whack in the middle of the gap. And now we just got a three-run double. Cool. That's exactly what I wanted. Exactly what I wanted. Fantastic. So the hop and vault are very similar in style of what we're doing, right? But it just depends on one hop or multiple hops. If for some reason he comes set, right, and just looks at the plate, then I'll go ahead and extend out to seven. Boom, here. All right, so sometimes they'll go no look, right. You get middle infielders will give you a pitcher no look. Hey, man, don't worry about him. Let's just try to, let's don't let him work. I don't want him to work and extend. Let's just go straight into it, throw a pitch, and let's catch him by surprise. Fantastic. If he's going to do that one, I'll come set, right, we're at six. He comes set, look at the plate. I'll go ahead and extend out to seven. Probably in that process, because he's trying to do it quickly, He's going to pitch while you're in the process of getting a seven. Guess what we're doing? We're going to hook it up. We're still third base there as well. Okay? You got rules. You got guidelines. We want to be aggressive. We want not to be aggressive. Again, for us, and you saw it in the World Series, right? Uh, I think it was Bregman maybe. With uh, runner second, nobody out, steals third base. And everybody's like, what is he doing? What? Man, that's crazy. That's madness. Why would you try? You might make the first out at third base. 
Well, that's the difference in your thought process. You're thinking about getting out. The only thing he was thinking about was getting an extra bat. He was thinking about stolen base. So it's all, see, the mindset that you're putting them in as well. No when to be aggressive, when not to, but when they give it to you, it doesn't matter. If they're going to give it to you with nobody out, one out, two outs, make sure we do a good job and we take it there. Um, <coughs> retreat. So we talk about the straight steel jump at second. We get the six, we get the seven, we've got hop, we got vault, we got regular. Well, coach, what if they pick, right? What if they go inside and move? Boom, what do you do? How do you teach that? How do you teach still to steal the bag? For us, our explosion is the same, right? Our explosion is going to be head up, and we're going to explode out, same way we would at first base, right, that drive. Only thing different is my head's going to be here at the pitcher, my first two or three steps. I see inside move, boom, breaks your pit on. And I'm sprinting back to the middle. Because how often is it that the middle infielder is covering on inside move if there's not a bunk coverage? Never, right? The pitcher on his own just going to give the old, hey, man, let's check him. Oh, okay, nobody's there. You got time. You got time. Don't worry about it. Right? If they want to pick you off, they can give you open glove, and they can spin move you. Go that route. Right? So that's going to be based off distance. So we can still get our jump there. Country, uh, pitcher feels uncomfortable. Man, I feel like he's getting some move. Oh. He's going to give you this number, and there's going to be nobody there to throw you out. But the biggest thing you got to make sure you teach your kids is when you explode out, you're not exploding out trying to read him. Like, okay, is he going to go to the plate? Is he going to go inside move? No, he's going to go to the plate. Here, he'll take off. If they do that, they're going to get thrown out third base a lot. Okay, no hesitation in it. Any hesitation in this stuff, shut it down. Get over the fear. Make sure we explode out. It should shock you if he inside moves. So that's where the suicides come into play. Fantastic, right? We do the suicides in our group work stuff, in our uh, workouts, right? The 5, 10, 5s, cool. Change the direction. It works out fantastic for this steel jump. We're going to explode out, get there as hard as we possibly can. Boom. Oh, oh, there he is. Breaks on. And I'm back to second base. Good, safe, and sound. Well, coach, you gave away you're going to steal. There'll be more opportunities. More opportunities, I promise you that. So that's a good play, a good play for us there at second and how to get that jump. Let's go around the world. Let's go to third base. Believe it or not, there's some stuff to do there at third. <coughs> Primary lead, three steps, all right? Our secondaries will be determined uh, based off number outs. No outs, one out, two outs. And we'll go ahead and get to the controversy, right? The one out. No outs we talked about. It's two and square. Simple, easy, efficient, 64, shortstop. Second base back, 6-4-3. First base and back with them. Zero, everybody in, right? We'll just take our secondary one, two. Read the baseball. Cool. Ready to rock and roll. The one out lead, secondary, I'm going to go three steps, right, one, two, three, I'm squared up with my primary, I push my guys up all the time, because for whatever reason, I don't know why, I don't know, they just like come to talk to me over in the third base box, where it is, but they want to come over here, I'm like, dude, you're, you're distance, you're further away, come on, get back up on it, get back on the lines, I'm always constantly pushing them up here, ready to rock and roll, it's a very aggressive walk, okay, the best way to describe it, hey man, there's a $20 bill right there, and make sure nobody sees it, but I want you to get it, right, be very Sneaky, efficient, aggressive. So we'll go here, expect pick, expect pick. It's a walk, very brisk, aggressive walk towards the plate. When that ball crosses the hitting zone, I want their chest facing the plate. They're going on contact, right? So balls get whacked. Well, coach, what's the line drive? I want their initial reaction to be this. So they see ball in zone, boom, there's contact. Now, I read line drive off the bat. Yeah, now I get back. Because in all honesty, if he hits a line drive at third base, don't really matter. You're going to be out anyways, right? Hit the line drive back to second base. you got enough time to make this move like, ooh, nope, there it is, and I get back. The ball I'm trying to beat is that ground ball in the infield. I think we're a lot more efficient with our chest going towards the plate at contact, committing to it. So you see contact, boom, the walk turns and run. Fantastic drill to use, right, because I always get my goofy guys. I got my freshmen and my juco guys, man, some of them are athletic. They get out there, all right, all right. Here we go, secondaries. Like, Coach, we're going to work on secondaries at third base. Are you kidding me? How do you work? How? Just trust me. Walk. And you start seeing them walk, like creeping. Where's he at? Right. Walk, man. Just good, aggressive, nice, relaxed. Walk, walk. So they'll walk, and they'll walk. I've got my two bats there, right? Boom, flank them together, and they take off. So that's all they're waiting on. Is either that or me to scream, tag, and make them sprint back. That's the read. Simple, easy, efficient. And so now I can control the drill to where, hey, yeah, walk, keep walking, keep walking, keep walking, keep walking. Like, 
Coach, are you going to click those bats? Are you going to say, tag, what are you going to do? They start to walk. They get aggressive. And if I saw him start to kind of ease up, like, Coach, I'm getting way the hell out here. We, we still, I'm still in play? Yeah, you're good, man. Keep walking. And kind of get him a little more aggressive. Hey, that's the walk I want. Don't get timid on me. I want you to walk aggressive downhill towards the plate because I want to be able to beat that ball, that bang, bang ball on the infield. We've scored on plenty of balls. Hey, Coach, infield in, run at third base. One out, contact. You're going on that? Yes. You realize what they have to do? Have to field it, have to throw it, have to make a tag. That's a lot going on. And it has to happen quickly because they know how aggressive we are. And that's already been added to the repertoire. The pressure already been added. They know that. Woo. All right. I think we have a lot more chance of scoring on that than we do waiting for a two-out hit or I'll see the ball in dirt. Two-out read. Only thing different with our two-out reads, the same secondary that we're going to go into, this primary aggressive walk. But we're going to hunt kicks at the plate with two outs. I want them to be aggressive. I want that catcher to block a ball, go down, it go five feet away, and us score. I want us to score. Coach, that can't be done. Not at the college level. Come on, man. Not at the college level. No shot. Division one baseball. Come on, man. And it, okay, maybe you can do it like a non-conference midweek game against somebody who's won 10 games. But you can't do that against Auburn. You can't do that against those guys, man. That's SEC. Okay. Good conversation I just had with Butchman from when he was at Mississippi State. Man, I remember you guys when I was at Mississippi State. Y'all did this to us, right? Y'all stole home on us. That ball I was talking about last night. They trying to grab Dreamweaver, right? Catch a delay. We ran. We ran on Mississippi State. That was those guys. So you can do it against them. You just got to know when and how to do it and how to do it efficiently. We read our ball out the hand with two outs. We're going to hunt this kick, right? I see down angle out the hand. I am turning my walk into a run. Coach, are you crazy? Ball is going to the plate, and you're going to run towards the plate? You don't even know if it's, where it's at? I know the ball is going to kick because I read flight. So I tell my guy, hey, man, you're running full speed. You see kick, just keep on going. Rock and roll. Bob. Rock and roll, just keep on going. If he kills it, right, in front, no big deal. He'll kill it. He's still got to recover, get that ball in the glove, get up, and then make a throw. So what we're going to do is we see him kill it. We're going to push off first on the inside, sprint back with our left foot inside part of the bag at third base. Cut down this throwing lane here. That's what we're going to get, get in that way. If they decide to go around us and throw on the outside, it's happened. We've gotten thrown out, right? Boom, catch here and go across. Fine. Fantastic. Appreciate it. Because if you're doing that, that's a lot of things going to happen and throw us out. I think we're bringing the aggression to you. We're going to be aggressive. And in this, it's not an absolute. In this, things are going to happen. You're going to get thrown out. The thing is, as you as a coach, can you stay as consistent as you need to be for them to trust in you and trust in the system? I think that's what we've done a really good job of. Not only myself, but my boss and my mentor, J.R. Teagues, who I played for in junior college, who I coached under here at Southeastern, who's now my athletic director. He implemented the stuff, man. And he stayed true to it, made me stay true to it as assistant. And made our players stay true to it. Hey, man, bad things are going to happen. It's part of the game. Sometimes the system is going to fail. But more times than not, we're going to have success with it. We're going to bring the aggression to them. That's going to be our identity. That's going to be who we are. Stay true to it and make sure that stays who you are and what you are. Um, catcher's delay. I'll finish with this one. So we'll run a catcher's delay. I talked about it a little bit last night. Defensively or uh, offensively at third base, <clears throat> they have to walk. And again, if they have any fear in them, you're in trouble. They have to walk and understand what they're seeing. They're seeing two things, right? They're seeing lob or no look, no see. Right, we talked about last night, we literally had the kid that was catching and looking, but he didn't see us. So he catch, look, go down a knee, throw. Catch, glance, get to this point. Oh, catch, glance, let it go. Oh, man, here he comes. Dead gummit, trying to grab the ball, right? Walking on his knees, trying to go get it. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about your luck, buddy. Too late. If they're lobbing the ball back or if they're not looking at you, it's green light for our guys. But, Coach, you got your third, your third baseman there. He, he ain't much of a runner. He's more of your bangers in your four-hole, right? Hey, man, that guy had 18 bags for us. He had 10 homers, 16 homers the year before. Yeah, had 18 bags for us, too. Double-digit guy in both routes. This is how. What an incredible jump at first base he got to steal second. It was this. He saw the right moment, the right opportunity. Coach, he ain't looking. Look him up, baby. Go for it. And it's just a walk. Walk. As soon as he sees release, he takes off. If he does check up, no big deal, right? Get inside, sprint back, and they're not going to realize what's going on yet. Some of those catchers will try to bait us in, and that's going to be up to us to determine what's bait, right, and what's not. 
Straight steel at home, we do it at least once every single year. Not only do we catch a delay, but regular steel. I'll leave you with this. If they're on the bump in the wind up, right? No check, and they're at a 2 8 or above, that's the three keys for us to steal home. Can you steal home with a guy in a stretch? Yes. Is it extremely difficult? Yes. But we had a play last year against Nichols, our, our catcher, and he's, he's a little bit out of control sometimes, but he starts walking to the plate with a guy in a stretch. The pitcher's kind of looking at him like, steps off, throws it down the line, we score two runs. Thanks, appreciate it. He kind of took him on by surprise. For us, mainly when we try to do this, right, guy in a wind up, all right, that's a key because he's going to be that distance. Some guys are quick in the wind up. Boom, here, the two fours. Whew. Remember, the less time you got there, the further down the line you got to get. But you got to tell you got to walk. And it's got to be a very distinct walk. He can't start out the bag like, okay, I'm still at home. Here we go. <laughs> no, walk, man. Just relax. All right? Have some coolness to you, man. You're walking in. It's ladies' night at the bar. Just nice. Ladies' night. Ba, ba, da, da, da. Right? And it gets more aggressive as you go, right, towards the plate there. As soon as you see him start, rock and roll, hook it up. Guys have keys. Two lane. We stole it two years ago. Guy had a key, man. He comes set. And he'd go. As soon as he came set here, when his hands go here, he can't step off anymore. He's locked in. So, yeah. So, from actual time, right, if you went from this one, it's like a 2-6. Ah, not enough time. But boy, when he did this, whew, now he's up to a 3-2. Cool. So, we took off. So, what did the guy do? We took off. He tried to step off. Whoa. Boom. There you go. Get home. You get third. You get second. Rock and roll, everybody gets a bag, right? It's open room for show. Everybody gets a bag. Take it, run with it. No stolen base on it, but we create the pressure. Stay true to your identity. Stay, stay true to who you are. Hopefully I gave you a little bit of tidbit in this. I'll be around until tomorrow. Be more than happy to talk anything with you guys. Appreciate your time and your effort. Thanks, guys.